Good morning. All right, we're going to get started. If y'all would, uh, please stand with us. We're going to start service off with uh, a song. We've done it a couple of times before. It's a bit of a mouthful, but I want us all to try to sing as loud as possible, okay? Because Jimmy's not here. <laughs> so, so we need to make sure that we show him that we sound better without him here. So we're going to start with Your Love Awakens Me, okay? One, two, ready. Good morning. That's a good job by our band. I heard Sarah Grace. Did y'all hear her? No. <laughs> she done good. First thing is happy birthday to our pastor. It's, uh, <laughs> happy birthday. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Day to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> uh, the collection day for our Operation uh, Christmas Child Shoe Boxes is today. Y'all can see the boxes that are gathered here. After church, uh, we're going to have a special prayer here at the altar, and we're going to pray for the children that uh, those boxes are sent to. So if you would, uh, be filled, fill it in your heart, come down, and uh, let's pray for these kids. I was one of those kids at one time. So let's come down. Uh, small group. 
today. All right, we get to eat again. Ladies' Bible study on uh, Monday night, 6 o'clock. That's uh, Sandra's class. It's a great ministry. November 11th is for, uh, Veterans Day, so we want to pray for our veterans. Wednesday night Bible classes remain the same. Marty's uh, Zoom and in person, 6.30. Ladies' Bible study is 6.30, Zoom and in person. The new elementary grade class on Wednesday night is 6.30. Brandy's the teacher. And the exchange use is 6.30 to 7.30. Now, Brandy, where are you at? Now, that's just for your class to close, or is that everybody? Okay. I was told Wednesday night, bring clothes you don't mind getting dirty. I don't know what that means. Hey, Ashley. But I'd bring old, dirty clothes. <laughs> Food distribution is the 21st. And our pastor has a few words to say for us now. All right, we would, uh, we would like to uh, honor our veterans this morning. If you were a member of the armed forces in any way, shape, or form, if you would, just please stand for a moment. I know there's a couple of more. Come on up. <laughs> ain't going to do it. All right, well, let's give them all a round of applause. Uh, we would uh, we'd just like to thank you for your uh, service to our country and to us, and we are forever grateful. We know, the, uh, in part, the sacrifice that y'all gave for us to have our freedom, and uh, we, we really do appreciate that. And uh, this morning, we'd like to welcome Jeff Warren, a.k.a. Preacher. He's going to be bringing our message this morning, so uh, y'all be attentive to him as he comes, and uh, I guess... Josh, you ready to? I reckon. All right. He's ready. So here we go. <clears throat> All right. If y'all would please stand. Uh, the next one we're going to do is lay me down. I think we all know it. But if not, I want to walk us through the chorus one time. And then the second time, I want everybody to sing, okay? <clears throat> this is how it goes. Come on, no, we're not doing that. All right, we're not going any further until we can get that down, okay? See the woes? That's like the most worshipful part of this song, okay? And this is for all you bad singers out there, okay? You know who you are, right? This is your time to shine. The spotlight's on you. Don't try to find the key because you won't, okay? Don't waste your time. But when we get to the woes, I really want you to sing out loud, okay? Let's try it again. Ready?
Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in humility. Father, we ask that you, that you allow us to hear your word with clean hearts, Father, with fresh ears. Let the word that's preached here this morning cut through us. Father, uh, lift us up through it. Give us encouragement, chastisement when we need it. Give us direction to know the will for our lives, Father. We thank you for the one coming this morning. We ask that your words be spoken through him, that we not hear opinion, but your, but your holy, your holy word. We want to say that we love you and we praise you. It's in your son's name we ask and pray these things. Amen. morning. First of all, I'd like to say what an honor it is to be here. Uh, thank you so very much. Uh, if you don't enjoy the sermon, blame Josh. <laughs> uh, first of all, I'd like to, I know some of you know me, some of you don't. Uh, most of you do know I work for the Arrow Police Department. Uh, but before that, I was called to preach when I was very young. And I'm going to tell you, I ran from it. I ran from it for 10 years, and that's part of why my sermon is on a little bit this morning, is excuses, and uh, I just, uh, I want you to bear with me, I, it's, a, it's amazing how I can talk to people, if it's one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two, but you put me up behind the pulpit, and it's just like, I, you take me out of my comfort zone, and it's not that I, it's, I don't enjoy speaking to people, or I can't. I mean, I danced in front of 800 kids at the high school last year, so <laughs> this, this is really nothing, but there's something about this. There's something about the power standing before God's people. It's just very overwhelming to me, and I want to tell you that I'm very honored to do it. For those of you that's never stood behind a pulpit, I want to tell you, stand up here sometimes and try it. <laughs> Uh, I witnessed my dad. My dad was a minister for years. Uh, ever since I was in about the fourth grade, from what I can remember, my dad, he preached. And uh, for Josh to come up with a, I'm going to kind of give him some attaboys, for him to come up with a different sermon every Sunday, praise God, because I had all week to put this together. <laughs> and I can't imagine watching my dad do it every Sunday, Wednesday. It's Thank you for your dedication. I just wanted to put that out there. Being raised preacher, a.k.a., you know, a, a preacher's kid, uh, a PK, it's hard sometimes. And I'm looking at a couple that will agree with me. Being raised a preacher's kid is different because you get stuck with a little bit of a stigma. You're either very, very bad <laughs> or you're so holy that a lot of kids, they don't want to have a lot to do with you. It's hard with boyfriends sometimes, I imagine also with girlfriends, but it's, I'm going to tell you, I was more of the, I was on the outside. I, I, I ran from it so hard, be, I guess being raised in it for so long, I just didn't want to be a part of it, and it's just kind of ironic what I ran from, and I offered excuses all the time. I'll never forget it. The very first time I, I felt like I was called to preach, I didn't hear anything. I, I, what are you talking about, Lord? I, I offered excuses like, I'm not very good. In, I failed public speaking in school, people. Come on now. <laughs> so I offered all kind of excuses as to why I didn't need to be a preacher. And that's where my excuses due to fear. That's the title of my sermon. And I want to start in the Old Testament, 4 and 10. Exodus 4 and 10. Now, before I start reading... Everybody knows the story of Moses, correct? So to kind of bring us up to speed, Moses, when he was born, he was born a Hebrew. He was set to be killed, so his mom took him, put him in a little basket. She put him in a river. Pharaoh's daughter found him, 
He was raised an Egyptian, brought up in all that wealth and everything, all of that knowledge. So to get him unto where I'm going to get to here, he then, after he grew up, what did he do? He killed an Egyptian, and then out of fear, he fled. He fled and went to the media, and where he continued there raising sheep. And that's where we get to, so I'm trying to set the scene up for that because I want you to know. And Exodus 3 and 2, God appears. So I'm going back a little bit. Now. God appears to Moses as in the form of a flame. So it's not like when we get to this part here, God's not, God's not spoke to Moses. Moses has no idea who God is. He does. So he gets to that point, and then God actually talks to him. And Moses talks to God. That's in Exodus 3 and 4. God tells Moses that he wants him to go into his people Israel, and he's going to lead them out because he's heard their cries. Exodus 3 and 8. God promises Moses that as a token, he will spend the rest of his life worshiping him on a mountain. Exodus 3 and 12. Then God tells him what his name is. Just as you and I are talking, God tells him, I am that I am. Then, what, is God, what does God do for Moses? He takes the rod that he's got, turns it into a snake before his very eyes, and then turns it back to a rod. Then he takes and he turns his hand leprous, and then heals him. So, I, I, I kind of wondered before I get to this, why did God do these things in front of him but I think God had to show him, look, this is who I am. This is what I can do. So if I tell you to go, I want you to go. Then we get to, then Moses said to the Lord, Oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since have you spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech of, and of slow tongue. So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth, or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. But he said, O oh my Lord, please send by the hand of whomever else you may send. Now before we go on, I want to back up to your first verse, back up to the very first one. I am not eloquent, neither before nor since have you spoken to your servant, but I am of slow speech and of slow tongue. Moses, all of a sudden, is offered an excuse because he's afraid. Does he have a right to be afraid? Well, I mean, think about what we're... It doesn't go in there, so I'm thinking in my head, if I'm Moses, man, I killed a guy. I've got to go back there, and I've got to... God wants me to go before these people. And according to the theologists, they think that there was possibly about 2.4 million Israelites that he was going to go before and talk to. So all these things, in my opinion, this is just, I'm putting myself in Moses' spot, and I'm saying, what would I be thinking if God's just told me to go before people and talk to them? Because I know what went through my mind when God called me to preach. Lord, I, I can't talk in front of people. I get so nervous, I can't stand it. I fail public speaking. So Moses, I, I, I envision all these things are going through his head. But I'm of slow tongue and of slow speech. Next verse. So the Lord said, here's where God's telling him, your excuse is not worthy because who made man's mouth? God's trying to reassure Moses, hey, no matter what excuse you offer me, I'm fixing to offer you, I need you to go. Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Next verse. Now therefore go, God even encourages even more. Go, and I will be with your mouth, and I will teach you what you will say. God is telling Moses, forget the excuses. Do you believe God sees what he's doing? I do. So he's telling him, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do all these things for you. Next verse. But he said, oh, my Lord, please, here comes another excuse. And I've done it. I mean, I've been there. Please send by the hand of whoever else thou may send. Why? When we get afraid, when we get scared, we start offering excuses as to why we can't do anything. How many times has the Lord spoke to you about pray for an individual? And you're like, man, they don't need prayer. They got somebody sitting right by. 
or coming to the altar to pray. Why? Somebody will think I'm not saved anymore if I get up and go up there. I have. I've used the excuse. I have. I've, I've stood back there and thought, well, I have nothing to pray for. I have, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with God. If I go up there, man, everybody's going to look at me. What if my, my pants are tucked in or my shirt's untucked? Excuses as to why we don't obey God. And that's what Moses, I believe in my heart by reading his word. And I'll show you in scripture why I believe it. Next verse. Here's one of the reasons I believe it. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. Why would God get mad at Moses if he knew he had a speech impediment? Why would he be angry with somebody that is now telling, Lord, here's what's wrong with me. God's telling him, I'm, I know that I, you can do it. I've called you to do it. So therefore, go. So now, God gives him his out. Is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. And look, he is also coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. I do believe God foreseen Moses was going to offer up whatever excuses he could because fear. How many times have we been afraid, people? I have. I, I admit it. Sometimes daily. Sometimes I've had to stop what I'm doing and just say, okay, Lord, you've got to take this from me because I'm allowing fear to interfere. My dad one time preached a sermon. It was called Recognize the Enemy. And sometimes as Christians, we will, we will allow ourselves to become so overwhelmed that we don't recognize what Satan's doing. You cannot believe there is a sovereign God that speaks to us and not believe that there is a Satan that will speak to you also. I mean, if he'll take Jesus and carry him up, what will he do to us? So we have to sometimes, and I'll never forget that sermon. It stuck with me for the rest of my life. Sometimes we have to stop what we're doing and take a step back and say, okay, Lord, where am I going with this? Whether it be, hey, did you hear about so-and-so down the other day? I was told that they've been seen. Well, wait a minute, step back. That's not godly. I'm here to tell you, if you have an excuse for something, then God's, God's trying to get you to do it. Satan will never have you do anything godly. So if you feel impressed to do something spiritually, it's not coming from Satan. It's not from him. Go with me to Acts 7 and 22. Now here's where I want to show you how, why I feel like Moses was coming up with an excuse. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. So now we've got a scripture backing up that Moses was making an excuse. Out of fear, he was worried about going that God had called him to do. I've been there. I've done it. And I still do it sometimes. There's a janitor that works with us at the high school. I'm the SRO at the high school now instead of on the road. Now. He has cancer, and he goes for treatments. And the other day, he walked in, and he was feeling really, really bad, and he was talking to us. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to him and said, just pray with him. Well, all of a sudden, I come up with the simplest excuse. Well, Lord, we've got all this going on. I, I'll, 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 pray, I'll pray for him. God's will will always be done. I don't care how the excuses come. Moses used the excuse that he couldn't talk. So what did God do? He gave him Aaron. I often wonder sometimes, did Moses miss a little bit of his blessing because he gave God an excuse and God had to give him someone else to be his mouthpiece? I don't know. I don't have that biblically to back up. But I'm here to tell you, I have been there before and offered excuses. And sometimes I feel I've missed my blessing because I didn't step out by faith and do what God asked me to do. Has anybody here ever felt that way? It's, it's easy to, I guess, stand and look at it and say, okay, I messed up. I'll try harder next time. But the next time the excuse comes, we have to stop. Recognize what the enemy's trying to do to us. 
He does not want you to pray with somebody. He does not want you to witness to somebody. He does not want you to invite someone to church. That's exactly what Satan tries to do, and that's where the excuses come, and that's where the fear kicks in. If you focus on your surroundings, you will come up with the excuses. I had multiple this morning when I was telling my wife about my sermon. I told her, I said, well, my sermon just got cut in half this morning. I said, I'm blaming it on Josh because he told me, he said, you're not going to sleep a wink. <laughs> well, I didn't. I did, not, I did not sleep a wink last night because I was trying to come up with it. And I jotted notes down on everything because I was like, man, he psyched me out. <laughs> but whenever we start coming up with excuses, that's when we start to fear. When we encounter troubles in our life, we're put to the test. When the nervousness, the scaredness, and the upsets become, faith begins to waver. Next thing we know, we become fearful. And then our faith wavers. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I thought about that. I thought, now how, how, do, how do I talk about faith? And I'm talking about excuses. Well, when you start offering excuses based on fear, you are no longer faithful. What, is it, what does the Bible teach us? Where there's doubt and fear, there can be no faith. Once we start offering an excuse because of fear, we start losing our faith. We start backing away from what God has taught us. I had planned on this being about 20 or 30 minutes this morning, and it's kind of run a little bit short on me, so I, I apologize to all of those that are thankful that it's going to end early. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to tell you a, a true story, and this is how God will use you, and if you offer an excuse. I'm going to use my wife, and I, we were riding down the road one day, and we passed this woman and this little girl who's walking on the side of the road. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, turn around and go back and give her $30. And I thought, well, that's just me. You know, that's not the Lord. No, that's, that's just me. So I just kept driving. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me again. And I thought, Lord, I probably don't even have $30. I'm, I, I, I got a quarter of a tank of gas. I started offering excuses instead of doing what God wanted me to. So I got a little further up the road. Spirit of the Lord spoke to me again, and this time I felt it was more stern. So I turned in a driveway. Allison looked at me. She goes, what are you doing? I said, Lord spoke to me, told me to turn around and go back and give that lady some money. So I pulled up beside her, and I rolled down my window, and I could tell I startled her. And I'm like, hey, I said, you know, are you okay? Do you need a ride? You know, what's going on? No, we're fine. You know, we got a little bit of groceries. And uh, so I pulled my wallet out, and I opened my wallet. You want to guess how much money I have? Thirty dollars. Do you know what I done? I thought I'm gonna need ten dollars later on today. <laughs> so I pulled out twenty. I pulled out twenty dollars. And just as I went to give the money to her, because I believe she was on Allison's side, Allison reached in her purse. And I said, What are you doing? She goes, I'm gonna give her ten dollars. As I'm here to tell you, I lost my blessing. God will get done what God wants done. I don't care who it uses. With Moses, he used Aaron. But I lost my blessing because she still got her $30 that God wanted her to have. I just didn't get the blessing for doing what God told me because the rest of the day, you know what I thought about? That $10 I had. I used the excuse that I would need a little bit of gas. There is no doubt in my mind if I would have obeyed God. I believe I could have gotten back out later on, got my truck, and it had been a full tank. I don't know. If he had to just make it appear. But we use excuses, and then we lose our blessing because of fear. I was afraid I wouldn't have enough money to get gas later on in the day. That is how God will use you. That is how God will, if you allow him, so the next time excuses come, all you have to do is stop and say, okay, wait. I remember a preacher saying, hey, what was that he said? Oh, recognize the enemy. Recognize when Satan's coming at you and he's trying to torment you. 
or God's wanting you to do something and, and you're, you're not doing it. Kids, whether it's speaking to someone at school, and you, you guys know, you run into them every day, you see someone who is hurting. How many times have you ever wanted to walk up to somebody and just ask them how they're doing or pray with them? Can I get an amen or an oh me? If you live for God and you, you, you believe that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, then you know and you recognize if he's in your heart, God will open your mind and he will open your heart to when you see someone, you will speak with them, you'll talk with them. But if you allow faith, if you allow fear to get in the way, you let that faith waver, you won't do what God says. But God will get it done one way, shape, form, or fashion. I'm living proof. Just like the, when I was going to pray with Danny, I started to pray with him, and just as I started to pray with him, I made excuses why I didn't. Lo and behold, the secretary has got the desk in front of me. She comes in my office. She said, hey, why don't we pray with Danny before he goes? Wow. Went out there. We prayed with him. As soon as it was over, all I could think of was, I didn't obey you, Lord. And, I, and it was simple, just praying with someone. So I had to go to her and tell her, thank you for obeying God, because I didn't. So when the excuses come, just recognize them. Say, okay, Lord, I, I, I'm going I'm to try harder. It would have been very easy for me to have said last like Sunday when Josh approached me, hey, man, what are you doing next? Oh, Lord, here we go. I know what this is. You fix and ask me if I want to preach. It's different when you're the one standing there, Correct. It's different when you're standing here instead of Jimmy. It's different when someone else is in, 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 the, in the spotlight. But if that's what God's called you to do, he'll make it work for you. He'll make it work for all of us. Before I turn the service back over to Josh, like I said, it, it's been early. I know we still got this to do. But I want to offer anyone, if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, these offers are open. I'll pray with you. I, that's one thing I want to tell you I fell in love with this church about. The very first time we ever came here, someone come up to pray. And I mean the youth. Well, they all file. And I looked at my wife and I went, I love that. But even if, if you know the Lord is your personal Savior and you just want you just want to come up here and pray. You just want to step out by faith. And if the Lord's prompting you, just go up there because it's happened to me before. I have stepped up. I've, I've stood back there before and been like, okay, I'm not going. I'm not going. Then the Lord's telling me, just go to the altar. Just, just, go, just go pray. I'll start toward the altar after several promptings and get up there and start praying. And the Lord just tell me, I just wanted to see if you'd come. Sometimes people are watching us to see if we're going to move. Sometimes we may move and it may prompt someone else to move. I want to say thank you very much for allowing me to be here. I hope you enjoy this sermon. Uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to beat when you've got good material. Now, if you have a problem with the material, take that up with the Lord. If you have a problem with the delivery, take that up with Josh. But thank you guys very much. opportunity to uh, to come as y'all stand you know there's all kinds of excuses that we make I've made excuses you've made excuses uh, maybe God's calling you to do something maybe God's calling you to preach maybe he's calling you to teach maybe he's calling you just to be a prayer warrior you know God don't need us he absolutely does not need us but he wants us. What, what is any better than an almighty God wanting to use me? He don't need me. He makes that plain and simple that he don't need me. But he loves me enough to use me, to give me a job, to give me an opportunity to serve him. That's what this is really all about. We make excuses not to serve an almighty God. You know, when I ran from being called to preach, 
when preacher ran from being called to preach, we were running from an opportunity to serve an almighty God. I got tired of running. I, I finally decided that, hey, I would rather serve a loving almighty God as to run from him for the rest of my life. But what is the excuse that you've been making in your life whether it's the excuse of not coming to Jesus Christ to receive salvation or an excuse not to serve him, an excuse not to do what he's called you to do, you have an opportunity right now to set that right, to come and ask for forgiveness, to repent of your sins because God does love you and he wants to use you. But we got to make sure that pride don't keep creep in and think, well, God needs me. God don't need you. He's going to make sure that his will is done. And like, like preacher said, hey, he's going to get it done. He's, he's going to make sure that his will is done. But are you going to allow him to use you? That's, that's the question that, that you have to answer today. Amen. Yep.
When we get rid of the excuses, you better watch out. Because God's going to work in your life. He's going to do things that you think aren't possible, but with all things, but with God, all things are possible. We just, we just got to, we got to remove ourselves out of the way. And that's the hard part. But with God's strength, it's possible. We can rely on him wholeheartedly all the time and in every situation. We just, we just got to turn it over to him. Do we believe what he says in his words? That, that's, that's what it comes down to. Are we going to trust in that above anything else? Are we going to trust in what his word says and then remain faithful to it? He's faithful, but are you? That's the question. So uh, we're, we're going to come and uh, we'll pray over these uh, shoe boxes. Uh, and uh, after we do this, uh, you'll be dismissed. So let's, let's come and, and pray over these all at will. Miss.